We're we'll looking back at Philadelphia once more and going back to some Centennial Exposition stuff because we've we've got a few books that we found. We know we love books, and we've got a few maps as well. So we're just gonna have a peek at Philadelphia itself, and uh, we start here our 1761 view of Philadelphia. So as you can see from the, from this image here, we've uh, got a few things that are numbered, but we don't have the key. And some people in Philadelphia will be able to tell us what some of these buildings are. This is from 1761, so almost 300 years ago. When you think about that, almost 300 years. That is absolutely insane. So this this is the state house up here. See? All these smaller houses on the edge, Philadelphia itself not looking that great. So I know that um city itself was founded, is it 1682? Okay. So this is only 80 years really after the city was founded. And look at that. Look. Insane. Monstrous, but it's it's gonna get even bigger. This is just to give you an idea of what it was looking like the British flag around some kind of fort here surrounding the edges tiny houses crazy so we'll move on to the next thing that is a wider view a few years later Actually, no, I told a lie, unfortunately. Our next image is uh, is not a wider view, it's uh, this one. It's uh, written in French. In this side is German, this side is French. But yeah, it's, um, it's a view of Philadelphia, as you can see. It talks about Phila Philadelphia being founded in 1682 down there. But I'm not sure exactly when this image is from. I can't get a date. Or when the actual image was uh, was created, what is quite crazy though is you see this uh, way they've done the outlining of these buildings here. You can see obviously they've coloured it in, and someone's coloured it in as you can see. paint here. Uh, kind of missed there, but yeah, see so they've done a job of colouring it. So originally this was black and white, um, which raises some questions, doesn't it? Because the fact that they've missed. I think that the person who drew this map or created this map, they wouldn't be, you know, painting it so slapdash. So evidently, somebody else has come in afterwards and painted the colours and all flags and stuff uh, on the people, of course. You know, the, this is all black and white originally. It does give you a view of what Philadelphia was looking like. Even these smaller homes over here, even their homes. Even these smaller buildings, you know, they're they're quite large. All in section here. Now, when you think, look at look at the way this all the buildings are built on. This is stone stone port that they've created. You know? That's uh, that's a lot more work than you think. You know, you can't just build the houses and then then do it. You have to you have to do this first. You have to have the entire coast laid in uh, in block work allow you to have this quite impressive I mean it, sh it could be wood but you know these buildings they're evidently not that's it's very impressive look there's some kind of battle going on here doom anyway but maybe they're testing the guns yeah that's a very interesting view Philadelphia now our next image is the one I promised, the bird's eye view of Philadelphia, which was produced, I believe, at the same time. Oh, did not mean to go that far. I apologize. But yeah, it was produced at the same time as the Centennial Exposition. So in Harper's Weekly, May 27th of 1876, this was published to show the bird's eye view. So this is 121 years. Sorry, no, 125 years after um, after our other image at the beginning when you think in that 125 years look what has changed from from here look at how much it's grown so we can jump back to this here for a sec see that so not click on it so there's your image that is in 1761 
This now, 1876. Look at that building. That's incredible, isn't it? Some kind of cathedral. Okay. Is the U.S. Mint? Look at the size of this. This is quite crazy. I think 125 years all it took to build all of this and get people living there. Because you know, it's it's all well and good having the people. If you don't have the houses. The people aren't going to live there. You know, you can't tell someone come move to my new city, the only issue is you're going to have to build yourself a house when you get here. You know, not, not many people know how to build houses. I mean, back then a lot more will have done. It's not like you could just go online and learn how to construct a house, is it? Look, look at this. Damn it. That's the, oh, Gerard College, so we've seen pictures of that. That is... Right there, absolutely impressive. Got the some of the names. This is the prison right here, reservoir, house of refuge. Here. So this is South College Avenue. Everybody knows Gerard College, Philadelphia. That's that's it. Sorry about the in and out. That's Girard College. Look at that. Proper Greek pantheon. You know, obviously when they got to Philadelphia and they're building their first houses, like, we need pantheon. Why is it? Absolute size there. Factory there. Waterworks. So we have seen images of the waterworks before as well, so it's this has been here for as long as I can have seen on the images. Not sure exactly what year it's built. We do have some more stuff of the Fairmount. Oh, man. Yeah, so we'll, we'll move on now. Have a quick peek at some of the boats. Here's steam boats and sailboats. Go around here. Look at all of this. It's impressive. Very impressive. How fast they did it. So impressive. This, this place was nothing but dirt in 1682. And somebody laid a brick and said, I'd like a house here. Now, 200 years later, look at it. Brilliant. 200 years from the first house. Well, not the first house. Founded is when it became a town, really. But still. That's 200 years from small, you know, few few buildings, and they went, okay, this is this is an actual place now. This, impressive, ridiculous. Yeah, so I probably should have shown you this one earlier, but unfortunately, I'm lazy. But this is the city of Philadelphia from 1781, I think. So this is 100 years before that photo we just saw. Look, look at that. This is 100. I think that's... Scroll down up. Um, 1778. That's when the date created. Look at that. And if we jump over back to our, our other one. That, 1876. So it's 100 years later. 100 years. Look at what they've added in it. Absolutely immense. Brilliant. Pat ourselves on the back, shouldn't we? For for all that hard work we did. I'd say we. I mean, you know, us humans. Good job, humanity. Now this image gives us a bird's eye view of the Centennial Building. We've got this this first image shows us all the structures that were built for this event. Look at this. And now we will be going into another book in a second, a couple of books that have close-up images and the names of all the buildings we've also got the real images if you want to see the real images go check out the other 1876 centennial video i did that one is a photo album of 
the actual uh, the actual images. So if you want to see them, go to that. But we will be looking at some photos in a second. But we're just going to examine this first. This looks insane. Look at it. Now, there is one thing I will draw your attention to in a second. So keep an eye on that flag. Well, I mean, don't keep an eye on it. Just remember. <laughs> you don't have to stare at it. It's not going to move. But um, we'll have a look around. Look at the size of this thing. So we have seen this before. If you remember, we've seen the fountain. We've had, we've had images. This point of view. One of these here. Got another one going there. Seems like a large. Uh, is not exactly the same. Doesn't have towers or anything. But another large building extending that way. Looks like it's not connected. So that's three humongous buildings here. Then we have um, we have obviously this one down here. This looks like bridge across the valley here. Look at this. There. We built that, added some kind of spire, obelisk thing. This building, which I think this one's the horticultural. Not mistaken. So these these are like greenhouse bits here for all the plants to grow. And look at these section. Smaller build. Go and visit. Look at this. This is crazy, isn't it? They built all this for the just for this event. And that there looks like a reservoir. So fucking hell. I mean, to be fair, you could see how that you drained the water. You could convert that into a little star fort, couldn't you? Sorry, is that possibly a nod? Old world reservoirs. But that is absolutely insane. Got something over here. Just a piece of uh, building. Obviously, these things, you know, they're all constructed for this event, for the 1876 Centennial Exhibition. All of this, just built, as well as the rest of the city, so that in a hundred years, built all this. See the city in the background there. Wow, it's just impressive, some kind of pantheon at the top style building. But, we'll move on to the next image, which is a very similar image to from the same event, I'll show you. Right, so we're on that second image now. It is, uh, it's, it's a different image, but it does look very similar, doesn't it? So hopefully this stayed up. Scroll down a little bit. Go. So if we look at this here, look at this now. 18, bird's eye view, Centennial Buildings, 1876 Philadelphia, yep. Yeah. Have a look at this one. The bird's eye view, Centennial Buildings, 1876. We've got got a couple differences, haven't we? Well, there's a, there's a, there's a few differences. That was quite strange. If you have a look down here, we have a, a train track. That wasn't evident in the last one, was it? No, doesn't appear to be a train track at the front in this image. But this does say the 1876 Centennial Exposition, right? It doesn't say the bird's eye view of the exposition before it was finished, does it? It just says the bird's eye view of the event. So, when did they add the train in? And when did the fucking train come in? Sorry to swear, I know some of you don't appreciate that, but when did the train get built? Okay. I mean, it's, it's the bird's eye view. Look, you got the, the, the text down at the bottom. It, surely, these were things handed out at the event or something, right? They're to do with the event. I hope you're, you're enjoying my confusion. I hope you're just as confused. But we can see that whilst it does appear to be almost the exact same picture, as in angle-wise, look at this building, look at this building, bridge, this one, okay? Look at that. And look, come to this. It's the, it's the same picture, but they've they've added in a train station. An entire train station has been added into this image. Now, if the train station was part of the final image, why don't they have that on both? Why would they put a picture up before the train station isn't even there? Because presumably, this is how the people all got here. But then again, these trains are supposed to help with the construction, bringing all the materials. So you'd think the train track would be there from the beginning. But let's ignore that because do you remember when I said about our flag? 
A flag? Do you remember when I mentioned the flag? Well, behind here on the flag, we've got a giant fucking obelisk. Well, if we go back to our other image, and we have a look at our flag, we don't have a fucking obelisk. Sorry for swearing. I'm not sorry, I'll do it again. But, um, look, there's no, there's absolutely no obelisk behind this. As if I need to zoom in to prove it's not fucking there, but, um, look, here we go. You seeing what I'm saying? There is no obelisk in this image, but for the bird's eye view of the 1876 Centennial Exposition. Did he just forget? What happened there? Look at that, that's been added in, that's been quite obviously drawn in. Look at that. Big ass monument has been drawn in. Uh, was that building there? No, so that bit, well, well there's one there, I'm not sure if that's the same one. Oh well, it does actually appear like that building's moved, doesn't it? Although to be fair, the distances between the, we are a bit zoomed in, the distances between the reservoir and the flag possibly are a bit, um, a bit different as well. Look at that, yeah, so the angle there is very different. The distance between these two is diff different. That should be in between these. Why have they done that? Why is that now over here with an obelisk behind it? Now these are both images supposedly displaying the 1876 Centennial Exposition. Now let's say you had a, had a copy of this and you were like, oh yeah, I've got a bird's eye view of the Centennial Exposition and then you looked at it and you were like, oh, no, turns out they've, they've not got the train station on here, the buildings have moved, the obelisk isn't on it. You'd, you'd be a bit like, wait, wh why have I not got the the proper one and you'd see people walking around with the actual one with the train station and the obelisk and stuff do you see what i'm saying this that's this is freaky something not right about this i'm liking this this is juicy juicy evidence the, you know there's so much difference if you want to see these website is there i think they're both so this one is digital digital collections um but you'll be able to find it by the names you, if you just google the bird's eye view of the centennial buildings 1876 you, you'll find it, but you know what I mean. These these are very similar, similar looking things. Very similar looking cards. Look at them. Obviously, this one doesn't have a little map in the corner. Uh, it has what appears to be a smaller, uh, a smaller contents key in the corner. But they are dated at the same time. So there's a much larger key with a map, but more stuff on it. And they're dated at the same time. You'd be well annoyed if you got the other one, wouldn't you? This one is clearly showing more stuff. And well, buildings that have moved. But that is that's weird. Very strange indeed. What do you guys think about that? I I've spent quite a while talking about this. So I really do want to know what you think about that because that, to me, pretty free. Right. So this image actually was kind of hard to get a decent copy of. Um, it's well, no, it's easy to download. It's hard to get a copy online that lets you zoom in properly without being uh, a bit of a bastard. So downloaded it so we can zoom in as much as we want. Now this is a bird's eye view of the city of Philadelphia, its streets, avenues and public buildings and of the centennial buildings in Fairmount Park. It's by this guy called Frank Lewis Leslie, sorry. It's by Frank. So sorry Frank. It's by Frank Leslie. Now Frank he was he was quite prominent it seems he was an engraver as far as i can tell and he made quite a few contributions to uh to philadelphia and new york in, in terms of these kind of drawings well engravings and here he has done the entire view of philadelphia including the centennial buildings so we'll date this to about 1876 because that's when the event was so um i think that's when this this image is dated I don't think it has a date on it. I might be wrong, but I'm not going to zoom in too far and have a look. If you want to find this image, you can very easily just look for Frank Leslie. Bird's eye view of uh, Philadelphia. You'll be able to find it on Wiki Commons, stuff like that. Very easy to find, but um, you'll, you'll probably want to download it so you can have a good look. But it might just be because my laptop struggled. But as we can see, we can see we've got Gerard's College over here, uh, as we'd seen before. The penitentiary is possibly this one. 
was around here, we've got some kind of church over here on our last map. But that's not the point. We can see over here our Fairmount Park buildings. Now they do look quite different, don't they? They've put put a teeny bit of effort. Farm buildings compared to the rest of the rest of the surroundings, but I guess that's be expected. But as you can see, we've got our buildings back there. The biggest things in the city by far, absolutely monstrous. Look at them, even our cathedral pales in comparison to the monstrosities back there. Now, in my search for Frank Leslie, I did come across uh, accidentally, and I didn't come across it, bad, bad terminology. Um, I found this one of New York that I'll show you. Now, this is obviously a little bit off topic, so we won't spend too long going into it, but I just wanted to bring your attention to it, because this guy, this was in 1853, this guy clearly had a lot of fucking talent. Stop swearing, Lucas. <laughs> I, I do apologise, I don't mean to swear. Um, but yeah, so this is New York in 1853 um, by Frank Leslie. I just thought it was very interesting. I thought I'd bring it to your attention. If you want to find it, you'll be able to. There's the link. Google that. Be able to take a look. Tell me if you see anything interesting. Because it's, you know, it's very impressive when you think that this guy was going around doing this. He was obviously very good at what he did. Now, whilst I was searching for Frank Leslie, I also found this. And what I found is Frank Leslie's Illustrated Historical Register of the Centennial Exposition 1876. And that's a 358 page book illustrated on the Centennial Exposition. Now, we've already spent a good 25 minutes talking. I don't think we've I don't think we've got it in us to make it through this whole book. I will, but I don't think we can do it right now. What I think we'll do is we'll we'll hold on to this. Because that that's a video of its own, possibly tomorrow or something. If you guys want, if you don't, if you don't care, then it's it's cool. But uh, if if you want to see that, let me know because we will go into this. This is Frank, Frank Leslie. Look at look at this design on this. But yeah, as you can see, he goes very in depth into the Centennial Exposition and he illustrates a lot of the stuff for you. So that's very cool. Now that that looks like London. It's the London Exhibition 1852. So that is the Crystal Palace from London. Awesome. But you know, there's another one of those, or was another one of those, in America. I can't remember where it was. Somebody told me on Reddit, and I've just completely blanked where it was. But they they showed pictures of it, and it was in the U.S. An exact copy of that one, built around the same time. Very crazy stuff. But anyway, we'll move back on. And if you want to see this book, if you want me to go through this book, drop a comment down and tell me because if you're not interested I won't bother but if you don't want to see it you can do it or if you want to read it you know go ahead if you just want to cut out the middle man and get rid of me being annoying then go do that too but for now we're going to have a look at some more simpler easier to digest now this one this view book souvenir view book probably issued during the centennial exhibition of 1876 so probably issued now we have a couple copies of this book in different format that do say that but what you got to remember is this cover that's on the outside is you know, it's placed on there the cover itself is placed on the the contents as you'll see are, di uh, are different what well, they're the same but as in they're in different looking books you see what i mean but the the first image is our view of Philadelphia now you can see that it's actually been cut in half and stuck on each page so this is a longer view of Philadelphia that they split in half and added to this now you can see all sections of the river up here this river here down here notice it has this art gallery main hall Gerard Avenue etc and then underneath it got exhibition written on in completely different text like completely different um and th this text doesn't get used again in the book the that text that font is specifically only used underneath these two buildings to clarify that they are exhibitions and i just find that really strange you know why when they were putting on art gallery didn't they just have exhibitionists 
But as you'll see, for the text, we use this larger font here and one there, right? But for some reason, with exhibition, they decided they needed to uh, needed to use this separate separate thing. Look, just stamp on yeah, like that. That'll probably be a stamp, you know, just stamp exhibition. Just to clarify that this is what it's for. Okay, they're not real buildings; they're exhibitions. We'll move on. They so, uh, are. Uh, our first one is Independence Hall. That right. So yeah, our first one is Independence Hall. Now, I know these look like drawings, but believe it or not, they actually are photos. Uh, they're not negatives, are they? Because obviously the people are dark. But um, I don't know, I can't remember the exact name for the for this method. But what they do is they take the image and then they, they draw over it, you know, like outlines. Go over the outlines of all the so, Whilst it looks like a drawing, it is a drawing on top of a real image. So that's what that is. Now, whether or not the people were really there, well, you can work that one out for yourself. Because uh, cameras back then wouldn't have been able to pick up movement of people. Like this. So th these things are added in, obviously. The buildings themselves, they, they will have most likely been taken using a camera. Now, down here at the bottom we can see the evidence of uh, but looking at the size of these windows why would you why would you have these going into the basement? But it's very strange, isn't it? Why would you suddenly do that? Tell that this probably went the same length down there to hit the first floor. Because if the ground level was here you wouldn't need to enter the first floor where it was. But, uh, yeah, I'll stop focusing too much on that. You can have a look at Independence Hall, some of the buildings that are there. And we'll move to the next souvenir book image, which is the Independence Chamber. Just inside, and nothing too cool. Have a look at that longer if you want by pausing the video. Same with all of them, really. The public buildings. Look at this. This is very interesting. That's impressive, isn't it? Look at that. Absolutely. Top of this, the way that comes down into these larger sections. The amount of block work that was necessary hey, for all these people. Their trams, horses pulling it. Wow. This is the new post office because obviously post offices have to look like this. They, they really must. If, if your post office doesn't look like this, you're not getting your post delivered. That's just how that works. Absolutely insane. Look at it. I mean, these buildings themselves could be in the uh, in the Centennial Exhibition. Now, obviously, these are just views from around Philadelphia. These these aren't even to do with the exhibition. Look at the Masonic Temple. Fucking hell. Sorry to swear again, but look at that. It's absolutely gorgeous. The size of this. It's always a... Uh, absolutely insane. And obviously, if you remember the other video, we've seen the Masonic... Um, Masonic Hall, I believe. Chestnut Street, is it? Might be remembering that wrong. But yeah, there's a, a Masonic Hall as well. So I'm not sure if the Masonic Temple is still standing today. I could Google it, but that's not what we're doing right now. So you let me know in the comments. Uh, the United States Mint. So we saw that earlier on one of the maps, if you remember. One of the bubbles that drawn. This thing's been here for quite a while. The in the background we can see this. I mean, it, clearly the monastery, but the the way that these are out of uh, 
say monastery, sorry, cathedrals. Clearly the cathedral, but the way that these are kind of misaligned makes it look like it's destroyed. I'm assuming it wasn't, but uh, maybe a, a graphical error there. But once again, look, these are the tram lines. The, the people carrying trams on the tram lines and the horses. Now the, the trams used to work before they electrified the tram. The Academy of Fine Arts. Yeah, that's where all the fine art takes place. Right in here. You'll also see down here, look, the way that these arcades continue going into the ground as if... Oh, Dan. Possibly. Do not, but those arches kind of give away something. And the Horticultural Hall and the Academy of Music. Now, this isn't the same hall as the um, one we see in the exhibition, as you'll see in the next few albums when we get some of those images. But it's uh, it's still for the same shit, but different building, you know. Look at the, the design on these. It's the same thing everywhere, isn't it? With these balconies at the front. But again, these, these are facades. Underneath all this is most likely red brick. The standard red brick we see everywhere. They, they just put facades on all these. That still happens today. Look at the, you know, the first floor. Got to step up to get into there. Those are the, down the stairs in the way. Door. window now I mean it, yeah in a weird way you could see, if you look at the, the size of these and imagine they, they should extend down even more possibly see it and this is the University of Pennsylvania wow this looks like it was converted into an insane asylum what's the chances that this was an insane asylum Point in its hit. Somebody tell me. But either way, it looks like it'd be a great candidate for a new season of Wednesday, doesn't it? Look at that. But even here, look at the size of the windows on the, the lower level here compared to the monumental size of the ones up here. And as you go around the building, you see that these smaller windows become longer windows. So that small window there where the hill is becomes a long window here. Just an interesting note. Maybe designed like that. Possibly not. Love to hear your points of view. Now this is Gerard College again, as we've seen. This presumably is Mr. Gerard himself. And we've got this Pantheon style Greco Romano. It's absolutely beautiful. I really like this. Um, I'm also hoping because I'm using new recording software. Really hoping that my voice has stayed in sync with the video because the old one used to really fuck up for. Me. So let me know if things seem like they are in sync. Well, I'll know in a while. This is the Fairmount Waterworks. Anyway, this is absolutely gorgeous. I really like it because this image doesn't do as much of it justice. Sections go off into the hill behind there, but we've we've got. Pictures of this that go back so long. I'm not like I said. I'm not 100% sure when it was built, but it will, you know, presumably in the 1700s at some point, or be the official story. But as you can see, these have, you know, they've got balconies here where you can literally just look down into the waters. It flows through into the waterworks, and they've, you know, they built all these pantheon-style again buildings on top. Look at that. Absolutely gorgeous, but I've seen it without the buildings on top where it's just all this stuff below Apparently they've added all that stuff Something over there as well, but that's crazy Absolutely. And this is the the last image of this uh, of this view book. It says Gerard Avenue bridge And as you can see, look at Wow, look at these lights right down into uh, into the stonework These have some Crazy spires on them, these two. Absolutely insane spires. Same on the other side. And some kind of eagle. We've seen a lot of eagles in Philadelphia when we've been seeing our pictures. So eagles on top of the lamp here. I mean, I presume that's what it is. Unless someone's just drawn it on, because I guess 
does look like someone's just drawn that on. So quite possibly wasn't an eagle there. But like I say, that was the last image of that booklet. So we'll move on to the next one where the, the mystery deepens. So this one shows exactly what I was talking about because it says the Centennial Exhibition, uh, sorry, Centennial Exhibition and Philadelphia on the front on this brown covering. When we come into the actual book itself, find that it's uh, it's exactly the same book as we've just read. Literally the same book. They've just stuck a different cover on it and said this is the Centennial Exhibition. Now you'll see in this corner, if get over there. Um, once again, same thing, art gallery, main hall, exhibition stamped underneath it, different text. But yeah, th this is something we, we saw in the last book, it's just not repeated anywhere, this text isn't used again, it's all this black, uh, bold type, and then suddenly it's like somebody's just stamped exhibition under these two. Possibly they don't want you to know that the uh, the exhibition has, has been there longer. I'll, I'm also wondering, because from our view earlier, a wide view, there's supposed to be a train station around here somewhere, isn't there? Is it here? Because, you know, well, I can't see it. There's supposed to be a train station, isn't there? Well, if that's the bridge, then presumably it would be here. But I can't see it. I don't know where that train station is that was in our image that we saw earlier. But so this is the same book anyway, so we don't need to go through this one and we'll move on to the next one. Uh, another one here with Centennial Exhibition, Philadelphia and 1876 there in uh, Roman numerals and this in the center. So we're gonna go through this book and hope that this one is actually different from our last one. And it is absolutely monstrous when you consider Wow, ridiculous. Would you, I don't know if I should zoom in on this because honestly it's really annoying to get around. But yeah, it you know, it resembles all of them really, all of the uh, Crystal Palace type industrial buildings that get created for the absolute size of them. Okay, look at this. Wow. art gallery here yeah. wow just think all, all the work that had to be done for this statues on top they look like griffins or something here I think the other side as well Is that possibly a reference to Tartarian griffin all around here like a fountain there and uh, our dude on top, that is, that's our art gallery. Now this is the agricultural building. Again, if you want to see real images of these, make sure you go over to um, the other video I did, the Centennial Exhibition. We go through actual photo album, that has proper images, not just uh, not this type. They look like drawings, the other ones weren't. But yeah, so there's, there's the agricultural spires on the we see these spires all the way uh, all the way around the world don't we and you know seemingly nothing to do with agriculture so what was the what was the reference for building the agricultural hall like this though? that's absolutely nuts isn't it just to show off your farming technique another of the agricultural and this is yeah the horticultural building we saw this before large greenhouse type thing here just look at this size absolutely nuts and you know obviously it doesn't really do it justice because we've got drawn in people but look at the size this building created for the 1876 centennial exhibition and uh, and then torn down because they're only temporary buildings aren't they although you'll have to tell me if you're from philadelphia and if you know if any of these buildings exist today you'll have to tell me i will go and look it up later Probably for the next video, check out if any of them are surviving. But in the meantime, let me know. And this is the machinery building, where all the machinery is stored and shown off. See what we can do. 
once again at the size of these things. It's like they had just nothing but free time in 1876. That's insane. This is the old Liberty Bell, uh, Washington's Retreat, and the Carpenter's Hall. And believe it or not, I think we've seen this building before. Pretty certain we have. If you go through the, the images we went through um, on the last video, literally the one before this, the Philadelphia photo album, pretty certain we see this exact building. But it's had buildings built along this side here, this side. So it's just a, a, an alleyway now, small street now. But you can see this, and when, when you change the image, I saw that dome on the back. So that's quite fun, actually. One of the buildings is still here. That's just the Declaration of Independence. They don't want you to forget. That's when you became free. The Independence Hall. Look at that. And something up here has either been damaged or scratched out. Uh, have some kind of have some kind of uh, three dots and two lines here drawn on. So you know, that mistake is cut out. Let me know. Impressive. Yeah, no, you can see uh, a lot. A lot of the flags still stand in Philadelphia today. These absolutely monstrously tall things. But you know. Are they flags, do you reckon? Or have they got another purpose? Radio antenna. Now, sorry about these images. They're on their sides. Can't help you. Just gonna have to live with it. There's the old state house. Everyone tilt your head to the right at the same time, and we'll suffer together. Um. Oh, now tilt your head to the left for the Unail Hall in Boston. And back to normal now. Oh, what else feel a bit dizzy? Uh, that, this is the capital at Washington. So now, now they're just showing us other images. They've run out of things in Philadelphia to show you. So even though this is the centennial album, I'll just remind you, this is what the capital of our country looks like. And just some description stuff that read. I'm not going to describe to you the that size. You want to come and read the size of the building? Come to digitallibrarycompany.org. Read it for you. So I think that's the end of the book. Nothing but explanations. There. We'll move on to the next one. So we're back with this Centennial Souvenir 1876 book. Um, it seems to be written in French, but if there are any images that we've seen before, we will just uh, we'll just move on past them. But once again, the main exhibition building there. Memorial Hall. But yeah, that's the Memorial Hall. Uh, the Horticultural Hall, right there. So yeah, all stuff we've seen. But just more images of it. If you want to pause and have a look, go ahead, do so. Funerary Hall there. The Agricultural Hall again, which is particularly impressive. The Ladies' Pavilion. This is the Judges' Pavilion. Uh, I went past that too fast. This is the judges' pavilion. This is something we haven't seen. Give an extra second to have a look at these. These flags noticeably have nothing on them. They are blank flags. They're the best type of flags because then you can just insert your allegiance. U.S. government building. Wow, look at that. Why they needed one of those at the exhibition? Just to show off the U.S. government, supposedly? I don't know. Tell me. Fuck the U.S. government. I'll be put on a list now. Um, the New Jersey State Building. Uh, is that how they build things in New Jersey? I think New Jersey has a, a lost architecture that I didn't know about. Gorgeous. Now to shoe and leather building. You need a big building for your shoes and your leather. That's what you need. That is a shoe and leather building if I've ever seen one. What that actually means is that it's made of shoes and leather. So whilst it might look like a building, it's just a leather exterior placed on a mountain of shoes. 
This is the Total Abstinence Fountain. You can only visit this fountain if you promise never to fuck. So yeah, this is the English building, and as someone who is English, I can say that is an English building. Uh, this is the Japanese building. And with a bird's eye view of uh, our event. I'm not seeing any trains, are you? I'm, I'm pretty certain we were supposed to see a train here. Big ass train station. Is this our train down here? Is this a train track? Ooh. Quite possibly a train track here. Going through the trees. Looks like it, doesn't it? It's either a path or a train track. But I can't see the train station that was supposedly here. Um, we've lost our flag in the distance. But we do have... Um, I don't think I can go any further. But we do have some kind of tower, which doesn't look like the obelisk that was there before. Do you remember the big obelisk with the flag? Really starting to make me wonder how much of this is real. Because they, they did move shit. Now this is this is another view, so that is the place. There should be a giant flag there, and then another building next to it. There's our reservoir. Where's that building gone? Like musical chairs. Ridiculous. But next is the uh, observatoire. Wow. The Sawyer Observatory. Look at this. That's incredible for 1876, isn't it? Take you all the way up there for your observatory. Wow. Nice. Come on, that's impressive. So this is our map here. Right. Boom. So, um... Yeah, so th these are our train lines here. That we thought... But again, it's so strange that we couldn't see them. Uh, supposedly, uh, in one of them, it, it just vanished completely. In the other had a giant station that was really easily visible but yeah look at that there's a machinery the main exhibition horticultural the agricultural all that stuff that we saw in the images before that is that's some good stuff now, that's the end of that book I think we've got like one more book to get through and then that'll be the end so get out this is called the Memorial of the International Exhibition 1876 with 48 views. Only 48. The stuff that's in here. So I'm, I'm going to guess that it's probably going to be the same shit that we've seen already. But we'll have a look. But yeah, the Memorial Hall or the Art Gallery there. Main building. The Horticultural Hall. I'm just, I'm not even going to bother. Government building. Women's Pavilion. The Judges Hall. The Shoe and Leather Building. I fucking love that one. The Pomological Building. Okay, we haven't seen this before. It's right next to the Agricultural Building. Look at this train as well. That looks like um, it's not even on a track. Going free roam. But yeah, so that's where they were practicing growing their fruit in this giant build. Absolutely insane. I think how much money was spent on that. And this is the Brewers Building. Now this is where the boys are. Brewing. I hope that's what that means. Uh, we got the butter and cheese factory. Of course, we've got a butter and cheese factory. Why wouldn't you? Department of Public Comfort. Now that's something you'd never fucking find anymore, in it. More like the Department of Public Discomfort these days. How can we make life even worse for our citizens? Tune in next week. We will. So this is the Pennsylvania Educational. I'm just going to click through absolutely all of these. I've lost the will to talk, but we're going. The English Commission, we saw that. Yeah, the French Commission building. The German Commission. I could probably just shut up and like roll through these. Zillion. <laughs> yeah, the Spanish. Uh, Japanese. Swedish. The Canada Log House. This is such a weird variation. Needed a Swedish schoolhouse and a Canadian log house. It's really weird. You know, what are the Swedes known for? Uh, going to school? Great. Build it. What are the Canadians known for? Trees. That's right. 
Built as a Canadian log house. The New Hampshire building. The Massachusetts building. Look at all these were built for this event. This is absolutely insane. Connecticut cottage. I mean, these are small in comparison. So, I mean, I don't, I don't doubt they were able to build these. New York building. But it's, you know, when you consider they did all of this, plus the giant buildings, and all the, the landscaping work and everything that's necessary to go with all that, it's just insane. And I think, I can't get over how some of the stuff was missing from that bird's eye view image, because that's not something you put out, is it? You don't put out an unfinished image of the, the land not even looking the way that it supposedly does. That's nuts. But I'd love to hear your opinion all of this what do you think that is in the background but the Mississippi bill coming to the end now non-stop research it's not even the research that kills it it's that I have to talk so much yeah so the Kansas and Colorado building here but how are you guys anyway tell me how you're doing in the comments tell me if you're enjoying this you're not enjoying it, then you're just going to have to deal with it, I'm afraid, because it's done. 